Welcome to Fraud Talk, the ACFE's monthly podcast. I'm Mandy Moody, the content manager here at the ACFE, and recently I sat down with Janet McCard and Tiffany Couch at the 28th annual ACFE Global Fraud Conference in Nashville. I asked Tiffany and Janet to interview each other to let you know about how they met and how they both came to get their CFEs. Remind me the day we met. It was, let me see if my, my memory's right. So August 16th, 2008. Is that right? Because it was a two day course, wasn't it? It was a two day course. And it was, and I know you've got August right because it was your birthday. My birthday was. But you've got the year wrong, my friend. Mm, 2004. It was. It was 2004. Yeah, that's right. It It was was 2004. It was in Anaheim. It was in Anaheim. At that funny, weird hotel that had all of the gondolas in the courtyard. Yes. That would be the right one. Very strange. Yes, it was auditing for internal fraud, and it was one of my first ACFE courses Mm -hmm. because I knew when I, quote, grew up, I was going to be a fraud (laughs) investigator one day. And so I was just getting started uh, taking the ACFE courses. And you were there with your boss or something, weren't you? I was. I was there with my boss Uh who was there. He was the partner in the firm, and he was the only one out of the 10 partners who thought that fraud investigation might be a good service to provide all of the other partners very traditional, not something they wanted to do. Well, that was back in the days when, I I know for me, when in 98, 99, I kept saying through interviews that I want to be a fraud examiner, people would look at me like I, I don't know, had three eyes because nobody had ever heard of it. I had never heard of it. You know, my first case was 99, 2000. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, figured out where this money's, this woman's money had gone. And I remember thinking, I don't know what this is called, but when uh, this is what I want to do. Right. You know, nobody in accounting uh, or when you're going to take be an accountant or take your accounting classes, nobody talked about the word fraud. No, no, it was the unmentionable. Absolutely. Yeah, it was completely unmentionable. So yes, August 2004. And Janet, by the way, was absolutely gracious. Um, she, she, you let me be your groupie. And <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call you groupie. Well, I felt like one, but I, I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is so somebody I could emulate. This is somebody who does what I do want want to do. And you were very gracious about answering my questions and answering my emails uh, that came subsequent. And and uh, we've really been able to bounce things off of each other over these last more than a decade now. It is more than a decade. Well, I, you know, I make the offer every time I teach a class. I love to hear from you after class and I make it to the whole class. And it was really notable, this class, because you were uh, in that particular like eight weeks of the summer of 2004. I think I taught 10 classes oh for gosh. the ACFE. Yeah. And you were the only one who contacted me out of all of the people I made the offer to. You were the only one who contacted me. And it was so cool to like follow what you were doing and where you were going and how your career was progressing. I just loved being in a position to offer you my experience because I was just a few years ahead of you in my career as a fraud examiner. Correct. And being able to offer that to you was one of the greatest joys I'd ever had. Oh, thank you. And it's been uh, an absolute blessing because when you go out, you know, you go and take jobs. But then when I went out on my own in 2007, that's when you really appreciate these relationships and one like yours because you've You'd already gone out on your own, and you knew... You went out first. I, I did? Didn't, I didn't go out till 2009. Wow. Yeah, no, you you started your own firm first. Okay, I followed out of necessity. You. Yeah. Yes. Well, and mine was out of necessity, too, in 2009. Okay. But yeah, no, you went out first. See, that shocks me. No, because, I mean, this is a case of the student overcoming the master, because <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay, so Janet, let's talk about... Starting our own business. Starting your own business, and <clears throat> not just the joys, because, you know, everybody wants to hear how great it is. <laughs> and I think, I really think um, that's what people, you know, they aspire to the greatness. Well, they, they, I mean, that's what they're hoping for. They're hoping for something better than wherever they are. Right. right. Being their own boss. Right. Yeah, what they don't consider is the six months you don't get a paycheck when you first start your business and right. the panic that that induces and the phone not ringing the phone not ringing so you go first tell me tell me like the sort of I don't know the 
turning point, the keynote, the thing that sticks in your mind the most about the first six or eight months you were in business for yourself? Um, so I, like I mentioned earlier, I started my business out of necessity. I was uh, the sole breadwinner for our family. My husband was a stay-at-home dad, so we had that backwards sort of you know, relationship. And I was the whistleblower at my firm. Oh. And I had to blow the whistle on literally the rainmaker for this firm. Wow. Right? He he made the money everywhere you went. Oh, you get to work for this guy. You get mm-hmm. to be in that group. And this whole time I'm thinking but he's perpetrating frauds against the clients and he's asking me to do things that are inappropriate in terms of just dealing with clients and, you know, some of the places we would have to go to entertain clients. And it was just not a great thing. Well, and I remember you calling me about a couple of those back in the, that that time. And I was, I remember being horrified on your behalf that they were asking you to do that stuff. Correct. And you were really the first per because I remember I was, an, I'm an accountant. Right. So, you know, we get clients the old fashioned way and they just come in or you go take them to lunch. Um, and so in this situation, it was, um, you know, taking clients to uh, gentlemen's clubs. It was smoking cigars and drinking whiskey and, and, um, y- you know, I just thought, oh, well, we're in the fraud world. I guess this is how you get clients. And no. so, because I just didn't have the perspective, you right. know, and this is how we got great clients. And Right. So anyway, you, you did give me the perspective that that's not how it had to go. So long story short, I blew the whistle and I quit my job and I had uh, interviewed for all kinds of places. And my husband said, they all want you to start a practice. Why would you do it for them? Right. Do it for yourself. Right. Right. So mm-hmm. I said, but I got to pay for everything. And mm-hmm. so I went out, struck out on my own. Right. And you're right. You know, the phone doesn't always ring. And I didn't want a, a, a traditional tax practice or accounting oh, no. practice. Uh-uh. And so I wouldn't take those sorts of clients. And um, long story short, well, we were about four months in and he took a job. He was going to go to work at FedEx Rusty at did. night. Yeah. Yes, my husband took a job. He was going to go to work at FedEx at night, and he was going to start this next week, this upcoming week. And I got a call on a case where the woman had um, been a, been proven that she had taken $2,200 and had written a check to herself, the accounts payable clerk, written a check to herself. 2200 Correct. Mm-hmm. This story's in my book. So she... Um, cried she does what every froster cunt does where it comes and they come in they prove it to her she cried she said she was sorry they asked her how much she took she said i only took about thirty thousand. and if you don't do anything i you know i'll pay it back so they had me come in to figure it out right but i it was three hours away i couldn't do that if my husband was working nights right and he said i'm not going to take the job you're going to go to yakima and you're going to take this case and I said, oh, my gosh, you know, this, is, this could only last a few days. Well, it ended up lasting six weeks. <laughs> she took $550,000. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I, proved, ah. I proved the whole case out. Then they had me clean up their books and reconcile their bank statements and put their books back together. So it became a really great engagement. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we certainly have had our fingernail, you know, cliffhanging moments since then. Oh, yeah. Ten years later. However... Um, it's a great first story in terms of you right. know, just that faith in this is going to work. Well, you know, I, I've always said that it, it, there's that expression, and I don't have any idea who coined it, but it's it's when preparedness meets opportunity that you get luck, yes. by however that expression mm-hmm. goes. And I, I know without that, my business wouldn't be where it is. You know, it's true. I, I founded my business in April of 2009, and to say that it was slow would be a vast understatement. Um, 2009. 2000, which is when things were... Right. Right. Yes. They, mm-hmm. w- the economy wasn't the best, but it's been our experience once we got the business rolling that when the economy's worst... We actually do fine. We actually do fine because that's when the frauds are discovered. Right. People um, are uh, looking through their books and saying, where's all the money? And they realize it's been going out the wrong way so that's keep exa- going that's exactly it yeah Correct. but I didn't know that then and so I wasn't talking to the right people and so I ended up taking the job as the um, inspector general for the city of Albuquerque this is an embarrassing story I'll I remember you know. this um, yes I remember you taking this job right so I took the job and you know I, I'd been struggling trying to start my business it wasn't working so well and um, so 
I took the job and I mean, that first paycheck I got from the city of Albuquerque was what kept me from actually going into like past due status on my mortgage. Sure. Right. I mean, it was that tight. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a six month probationary period. And in that period, I made a whole bunch of changes and did a whole bunch of stuff. The, The previous inspector general was not was was really more of an internal auditor. They weren't really doing fraud examinations, and the reports weren't terribly helpful. And I and so I was making a whole bunch of changes to make things better. And my boss wasn't terribly appreciative, to be quite honest. <clears throat> and so she extended my probationary period from six months to eight months. She added oh. two months on, which I didn't understand. You know, no. I was getting really good feedback from council, from the mayor's office. I didn't really understand that, but it was her prerogative and exclusively her prerogative. And I went to teach in Salt Lake City for the ACFE on a Monday, Tuesday. I got back to the office on Wednesday morning and I couldn't get into my computer. And it was the last week of my probationary period and they locked me out. I was fired. They did not continue or they didn't make me permanent. And so I'd lost the job as inspector general. Now, when most people get fired, it's a fairly quiet affair. I mean, you don't like you don't want to talk about no, you it. Just sort it's of sneak sort out of the back sneak door. Sneak out the back mm-hmm. door. Um, the local media wouldn't let that happen, and so my oh. termination was no. the yeah. It was the headline on the metro section above the fold. Oh. You know? <laughs> because I'd been McCard in the- canned. <laughs> it was exactly that thing. Like McCard got canned, <laughs> and so here I was, like my termination. So I got fired on a Wednesday. Friday morning, it shows up in the paper. And, you know, when I got fired, it was like, well, I still have my business. I hadn't closed it. I still had an office. And so I just went, know, to, work. went to work for my for my business because I had been allowed to keep my business open while I was the IG. And so I just sort of slid back into McCart Accounting Consulting. And the article came out Friday morning. Like I said, metro section, headline, top of the page, above the fold, Included in it are comments about me, very positive comments about me from the president of the city council oh, and, that's good. and uh, the mayor's office, you know, very positive. It was maybe the best advertising I ever had. Sitting at my desk that day, I must have received six, eight calls of people saying, I- I'm so sorry this happened to you. And I got three cases while I was sitting at my desk that day. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes. Ex- you know what? I, I've always sort of felt like I should send that person who terminated me, I don't know, a bouquet of flowers yes, or exactly. something. Thank <laughs> a you cookie for the bouquet. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for putting me on the path I'm supposed to be on. Right. Thank you for putting me on the path I'm supposed to be on. And I learned a lot as the inspector general for the city of Albuquerque. I had a great time doing it. I wish I could have stayed longer and made more change there. Um, but that's clearly not what I was supposed to do. And so then I was back in my business and my cases uh, really picked up and we've been going really good since then. So Beautiful. You know, the business I started on my kitchen table is now, you know, now we have five employees and we're we're working nationwide and having a grand old time. Yeah, same here, you know. You, you start in your you start at a necessity, and you know I had an I I had an office in my home, and now we've got office and staff and mm-hmm. clients and gosh, I was in Ontario, Canada last month, and you know you just never know. That's where right. The cases are going to take you. I know. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fraud Talk. This is Mandy Moody signing off. You can find all of our podcasts on acfu.com and in the iTunes store. So please look for us there and we will talk to you next month.